Well, basically, the, vac the space vacuum physics, or, or vacuum physics, period, uh, requires that you have an ultra-clean environment because once you achieve the high-level of vacuums that we do, the tiniest speck of any material might be a contaminant for a very long period of time. So the basic idea is to do as best as you can, which is not always perfect, but you try to eliminate dust particles before they get to the work area, and there's various ways to do that. So we, we invented our own way because it's very expensive to do it uh, the industry way, which uh, the clean room setting is a fairly expensive environment. The clean rooms are typically used for biology. Uh, they're used in the computer industry, computer chip industry, as well as vacuum, especially in the computer chip industry, you use vacuum chambers to actually produce the computer chips. And one of the demands on a computer chip is that they be ultra pure. And we relate vacuum to purity. Uh, basically, of the, the, more, the better the vacuum, the, the higher the level of purity. And that's what we look for. Well, I've been building mass spectrometers for spaceflight uh, for part of my career, and we decided that we wanted to, I, I decided, and the, the students along with me decided we wanted to put together a vacuum chamber uh, and a mass spectrometer system, and the hope was that we could do it before the end of the semester, and we just succeeded. The mass spectrometer, you may hear about it on CSI, sometimes they'll mention the mass spectrometer or the mass spec. Uh, is an instrument designed to measure minute quantities of, of, of elements and compounds, and that's what we'll be doing. Well, I never knew what any of this stuff was, um, the part, the flanges, the neutral mass spec. Um, there, there's just a lot of knowledge to learn about how vacuum systems really work and how uh, they're still contaminated, even if you think that there's nothing in there at all, like water, this is like the worst contaminant. Certainly PVC pipe I and mean, uh, plastic is a little bit cruder than industry, but the idea is uh, a laminar airflow. And what that means is that you do not have flowing, blowing air or turbulence as we refer to it. Instead, you just have a mass of air moving very slowly downward. That pushes particles downward. And then on the floor, we have sticky mats. And we have to let the room actually uh, work for about a month or so before we consider it uh, dust minimum, and I won't say dust free because there's no such thing. I wasn't sure what I was going to do in the first semester, which was last fall, so I decided to take a full spectrum of things, but I've always loved uh, uh, science in general, Earth and, or, uh, and space sciences, so I took a, uh, space science last semester with Dr. Jordan, loved the class, wanted more. He said he recommended that I take this class, and um, it, it didn't take much convincing. I really wanted to get into vacuum physics. Just the sound of it just sounds really cool. Humans are the dirtiest thing in the room. It turns out that standing or sitting, we're producing 100,000 particles per minute. Uh, walking uh, at various speeds, we can produce up to 10 million particles per minute. And uh, with a lot of vigorous activity, which happens in the laboratory, uh, 100 million particles per minute. So we are preventing ourselves from contaminating the already clean system. The parts that we put together arrive from clean labs where they were built in that environment. So we didn't want to change the environment uh, too much uh, by bringing it here. And so we built this, this makeshift facility that it was working pretty well. We put mirrors out just to test out how well we were doing for weeks at a time and nothing appeared. So we're doing good. I think this is the culprit. Today was uh, a bit of a repair. We, we knew that when we put the vacuum system together, there would be potential for one part or another to leak. Um, we isolated that part, which is a very small region of the system, and uh, narrowed it down to one particular part. And the idea was to remove that part, get it out of the system, and put a correction on it, or at least a temporary correction patch on, that sy on the system. And now we're back to normal. Uh, tomorrow we'll be uh, measuring uh, spectrum from the mass spectrometer. We've had our first spectrum that we've just now been able to measure. So we've actually achieved the goal of putting this thing together and doing our first measurement. So we're really pleased with that.